Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and these are my favorite open face helmets. First up is the Bell Custom 500, and when I picture a three-quarter helmet, I'm thinking of this. It's the icon of the open face category and probably one of the most recognizable helmets in the world. That's because it has a pedigree like no other. In 1954, the founder of Bell Helmets, a guy named Roy Richter, formed the company's very first helmet out of fiberglass. And he called it the 500. A lot has changed since the beginning of the Cold War, but the 500 hasn't changed much. It's still a fiberglass bucket, nothing fancy, no ventilation whatsoever, and the liner inside is neither removable nor easily washable. What Bell has updated is the fit. 500s of the past were typically quite round, while this newer one is more of an intermediate head shape. It was made a lot slimmer and a lot lighter for its 60th birthday, and in that vein, it is a featherweight 1100 grams, easily the lightest and the lowest profile open face helmet out of all my top picks. For myself, I would choose this helmet over any other open face, and there are a few reasons for that. It's DOT and ECE approved, which means that it's very safe for the three quarters of my head that are actually covered by it. And I also get five different shell and EPS sizes in this guy, which is huge. Normally manufacturers use three, so my medium helmet is always going to be a little bit chunkier than it has to be because it shares that shell size with the large. With the Bell 500, however, every size except for extra small is going to get its own tailor-made shell. I love how the exterior is a smooth blank canvas for the million colorways that Bell makes this in and the graphic options as well. And then the sticker up front, I can peel it off, which is nice if I want an even more streamlined look. Then there are these five snaps, again, which make it compatible with a bunch of face shields you can get from Bell or even Biltwell. And on the interior, you get style with this quilted pattern. At 150 to 170 bucks, Bell has done very well to make this helmet as good as it is. But why wouldn't they? I mean, this is their heritage, it's their inception. Of course they're going to make it a very special lid. Now, if I want that classic look with a little bit more practicality, I'll go for something like the showy RJ Platinum R. Compared to the Custom 500, we have two big improvements. One, the interior of this guy is removable and washable, which really should be a given nowadays, but somehow the 500 got away without one. The other big improvement is ventilation. We have two active intakes on the forehead and two active exhausts on the rear. I often hear people talking about how much safer the Shoei is because of its Snell rating, but to me, it doesn't really hold water. Based on my understanding of ECE and Snell ratings, I would say that the Shoei is going to absorb impacts better, but the Bell Custom 500 will impart less inertia to your neck, so that is to say it's a wash. They're equally safe. The interior of the Shoei has a few refinements over the Bell. We get grooves that make it easy to wear with eyeglasses, and little recesses for the speakers as well. We also have more soundproofing than the 500. The exterior, on the other hand, leaves a bit to be desired. We get the same five snap system for visors and face shields, but I really wish Shoei had avoided putting these contours on the shell because to me that kind of ruins the classic minimalist look. I'm also skeptical about the shell material itself. It's Shoei's AIM plus construction, which basically means that it's fiberglass plus some organic fibers woven in. So it should be nice and light. However, the RJ tips the scales at a whopping 1,330 grams, which is both surprising and disappointing. Of course, you can't deny Shoei's exceptional build quality, and at $350 they have thrown in the visor, which makes the price a little bit easier to stomach. Of course, you can get these same features and a lot more for even less money. The LS2OF569 comes to mind, and at $130, this is the maximum value per dollar in the open face category. You got your removable and washable liner, you of course have your big face shield, you have a drop down sun visor in there, you have two active intake vents on the forehead, and you have a passive exhaust slit on the rear as well. LS2 says the shell is HPTT, which stands for High Pressure Thermoplastic Technology. That might sound impressive, but it's actually just the most basic plastic. However, LS2 was able to get this thing pretty slim and lightweight. It's lower profile than the Shoei and only 30 grams heavier, which is really nothing when you consider how many more features this guy has. What I love about LS2 is that they offer cheap helmets while still giving these little luxuries. On the chin strap, they've gone for a ratchet system rather than the typical D-ring, which makes it easier to operate with gloves on. And then up here, this is one of the best quick release systems on the face shield I've ever seen. You just flick this little knob to open, and then you rotate this way and pull it off. The only thing I don't like about this helmet is the branding. For one, LS2OF569 sounds like a tax form, not a motorcycle helmet. 
And then they went nuts with the decals. I mean, they put their name on this thing not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. They're not removable stickers either, so I'm gonna be a rolling advertisement whether I like it or not. But hey, maybe it's the least I could do, because LS2 is giving me a big break on the price tag here. To show you what I mean, I brought along a helmet that I don't like, HJC's IS33. These guys retail right around 160 bucks, but Fortnite.ca has them on for 130 right now, so it's essentially the same price as the LS2. And again, we have a quick release face shield, we have a drop down sun visor there, we have a removable and washable liner, all the same features as the LS2. But the HJC is only DOT approved, while the LS2 is DOT and ECE approved. The HJC's shell is polycarbonate rather than plastic, but somehow it still manages to be heavier at a colossal 1,490 grams, which is ridiculous for an open face helmet. What's even worse is that they wasted weight on this stupid retracting mechanism, and it tends to leave the sunshield halfway down as soon as the spring in here gets worn out. And on that note, the HJC's sunshield is only a half tinge below clear, which is not nearly dark enough to be useful. I would say that the HJC is quieter and offers better build quality than the LS2, but it's also much bigger and heavier. Maybe you could call the IS-33 a decent helmet for the price. But in my opinion, all the HJC does is make me appreciate the LS2 OF569 even more. And that's it for my favorite open face buckets. Let me know what your favorites are in the comments below, and thank you guys very much for watching.